This podcast is meant for general health information and is not meant to override any medical advice. All questions will be screened and not contain any personal information. If you want a private consultation, contact us via positivechoice.org or you can contact your provider directly. Thank you and enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome to the Positive Choice Wellness Podcast. My name is Melanie and I'm an exercise physiologist. My name is Kimberly, and I'm a registered dietitian. My name is Brandon, and I am a exercise science professor. Oh, I like those credentials today, Brandon. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have so many titles, I just got to pick one. Right? It just it, You pull them out of a hat? Is that what you do? This one yeah. today. <laughs> um, well, I'm really excited today because we were chatting about what would be a good topic, and one we haven't really talked about i think historically on this podcast is arthritis which is a relatively prevalent thing that happens to a lot of people as they get older and it's as far as i'm aware not fun would that be a good consensus on that one yep and it's currently not fun for one out of five americans oh great even better okay (laughs) And I I love that we're talking about this for, for a few reasons. One, actually, I think at this point, now that I'm thinking about it, I would say a majority of the people that I work with uh, privately have arthritis or some form of it, um, which can be kind of impactful on their day-to-day and how they're able to do things around their house and their lives and so forth. And if I'm already working with this many people, and I don't work with that many people that have arthritis, I, re- I realized, especially with Brandon suggesting this, that this would be a great topic because... I'm sure there's more of them, more people out there, as we know, one in five Americans. So I guess a great place to start, what is arthritis? Yeah, that's a great question. And we all are participants in the AGING process. And there's a lot of things that are going to happen to us as we are in the AGING process. That's As we get older, we're going to have discs that are Popping out of our backs, we're going to have uh, rotator cuff muscles that are getting strained. And we're also going to have more arthritis as we get older. It's all mm-hmm. things that happen naturally. But to some people, they happen at, to a greater degree. They happen faster than other people. And so arthritis is really an umbrella term for a large family of musculoskeletal disorder. It's involved the degradation of joints and tissue around the joints from chronic inflammation swelling, and damage. And symptoms include pain, decreased range of motion, joint deformities. And there's actually like many types of arthritis too. The most common one is osteoarthritis, specifically Mm -hmm. like knees, hips, and shoulders. But there's also... Like the clue in with that one's osteo, right, for bones? Osteo for bones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then there's rheumatoid arthritis. That's like an, immu- an immunological disorder where your body's immune system attacks the cartilage. Uh, and then there's arthritis from viral infections, bacterial. I mean, so many. You know, I've also known um, quite a few people who had like injuries in sports when they were younger. And then those injuries end up becoming inflamed arthritic areas as they get older. And that's like another common thing I've heard of a lot. Wow. Yeah. Makes it so that's and a, there's something. a lot of comorbidities associated with arthritis too. Like oh, okay. Diabetes, obesity, and heart disease are also really common with arthritis. Well, how fun is this? Wow, what a great disease! <laughs> a lot of fun things we're talking about, right? Oh boy! No. So it, it's obviously <laughs> knowing that arthritis kind of sucks. Um, so not fun to have sounds pretty unpleasant to have, and. You know, it's it's onset by a variety of different things, it sounds like. So it just depends on the type of arthritis you may or may not have. You know, because it affects so many people and because it's so painful, I hear a lot of things as far as, like, limiting your ability to do stuff. Is it is it truly limiting in that way? Or is it more of a, it doesn't feel great, but we can still do things kind of situation? Like, are we actually prevented from doing the movements we like to do with arthritis? Jen. There's definitely some movements that have a greater propensity to cause pain. 
-hmm. and can make life harder. But there's also so many movements, and it's, in, it's specific to the individual, but there's so many movements that can also be helpful for arthritis. Okay. And so if someone wants to work out with arthritis and it's just hurting, like, what do they do? Do they do they just push through it? Like, what do we what do we do here then? Because, I mean, obviously, I feel like it's going to be painful regardless of who you are if you have arthritis, right? Am I wrong? I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it can definitely be, definitely be painful. And I think a lot of people even wonder, is, is it safe to exercise with arthritis? Should I even be exercising? Because just getting up in the morning hurts. Why would I want to exercise? Because that's definitely going to hurt. But evidence strongly indicates that many types of exercise can improve arthritis. Not specifically like reverse arthritis or heal it, but improve the pain, increase the quality of life, and increase range of motion. So there's really not one type of exercise or form of exercise that works best for arthritis. But the most important areas to cover are going to be a strength training type of exercise, aerobic training, and then a mobility flexibility training. So if those three, if you can find a form of exercise that works on all three of those components and you can modify it to your level, your ability level and your tolerances, then that's great. We should focus on that. Okay. Okay. So knowing that then, all right, so we can find ways to move. And I love that you said strength training. It always makes me happy when I hear that. So we can find a way to move, usually incorporating what sounds like all facets of fitness and being well-rounded as an individual, in a sense. You said it reduces pain. That's what I thought was interesting with arthritis. Exercise can reduce the pain you feel versus the inverse, which is what I hear people say. I'm in pain, so I can't move. But you're saying we should move. It reduces that pain. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. And there's a lot of things in life that are uncomfortable but lead to better outcomes. I mean, I just think like in our personal life, if we're having a hard time in a certain personal relationship, it's uncomfortable. It's going to require an uncomfortable talk maybe, but it's going to lead to better outcomes. So it's like, it's like the same thing in a lot of musculoskeletal disorders is, yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable to move. And there's a lot of the fear component, like, oh, I'm scared to move. So I'm just not going to move. And then just moving is going to hurt, not because necessarily the arthritis, but because this person has made it a habit of not moving not taking their joint daily through a full range of motion. So therefore, any time they get out of that small comfort zone, it's per their brain perceives it as pain, even though that pain may not even be coming from the arthritis. It just may be, become, be coming from lack of movement. So yeah, exercise at first, it might cause a little pain, and that's actually normal. It's normal to feel a little bit of discomfort or mild pain during exercise, but we just want our patients and listeners to know, don't worry if you feel a little bit of discomfort or mild pain, because that doesn't mean that your joints are being damaged further. And that's been shown in the research as well. I have a citation for that. I can always cite those two. We want. Of course. You like the research guy here. That's what you're for, Brandon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, so I'll just show you right now, like the, the American Council of Exercises Professional Guide to Personal Training says that mild discomfort is to be expected, but it doesn't mean that further joint damage has happened. Okay. So it's just kind of like a part of the process. Okay. That's cool because I've had a number of patients come to me saying that their doctors have told them motion is lotion, right? So it sounds like that totally applies. <laughs> I had a patient tell me that the other night. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I know that obviously one of the big benefits, of course, of movement is it helps with joint lubrication. That's like one of the big things with movement. It just proceeds to help with that. And obviously, if we are feeling stiff and inflamed and we just stop moving, you have lack of that. So it does make a lot of sense pointing out like, yeah, if you're just not moving in general, it's going to suck regardless if you have arthritis or not. So, and we all know that as just the average person, if anyone's ever sat around for extensive periods of time and then suddenly said, I'm going to start moving now. The first time you get back into it, not fun. 
I would say the first time back after a while, not fun, not a fun mm-hmm. experience. Doesn't feel great. But I know I don't have arthritis, so when I get back into it, it's like, well, this is just unpleasant, but I know it's not because of that stuff. And now it makes sense thinking about these patients that we might have who are just like, oh, it doesn't feel good as my arthritis. Possibly not. Interesting point. Interesting point that you're uh, bringing up there, Brandon. Yeah, that is interesting. So when we talk about incorporating this well-rounded physical activity routines, you're mentioning like full body mobility, range of motion exercises, strengthening and cardiovascular exercises. So the whole kit and caboodle here. Are the recommendations for that different compared to the average person? Like usually when we talk about people's strength training, I'll say like, hey, you know, you do like eight to 12 reps, two to four sets, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like keep it pretty much a generic recipe for strengthening. But with people with arthritis, does it change? That's a great question. And the American Council on Exercise, the American College of Sports Medicine, and the National Strength and Conditioning Association all have, all share that the guidelines of exercise for arthritic individuals is basically the same as for general population. There's not like, there's really no difference. The only difference is, is like making modifications and staying away from certain movements that really do exacerbate the pain, such as like twisting or something like that. But yeah, the the guidelines are actually really similar, if not the same as general population. So there's no specific recommendations for arthritis that are wholly different. I mean, I have some recommendations from those organizations. I mean, they, they recommend two to three sessions a week of resistance training Yay. Uh, at a moderate load, moderate intensity, right? Mm-hmm. That doesn't sound too different from re- what's recommended to the general population. Um, they do say to start with shorter session lengths to determine your tolerance, right? So if you're listening, you have arthritis, don't start with a hour and a half session. Start with a 15 <laughs> minute session. Determine yeah. your tolerance. I mean, I find that so many of the barriers that people have of exercise is because they didn't establish their pain threshold or their tolerance for their conditioning. Gotcha. So just start small, start slow. And that's a fair point because I've actually had people without arthritis who have straight up just been like, oh, I hate exercise because like whenever I start, it's just horrible. And it's like, are you sure it's not just because you're out of shape? (laughs) I don't say that actually. I say it much nicer than that. Yeah, let's talk about that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but like where your fitness level is can make a play a role in this. Absolutely, that's good. So, le- what do you think is worse than the wrong type of activity for arthritis? What type of activity do you think is worse than the wrong kind? You go, Kimberly. No activity. None. Uh, I, was gonna, I was like, I knew the answer. I was like, Kimberly should say it. <laughs> <laughs> None. No movement. No activity is worse than even the wrong kind of activity. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the effects of a sedentary lifestyle are going to worsen the symptoms and advance the arthritis even more severely. So that's really the most important thing, really, why we're having this discussion, why we want to educate people on arthritis is, hey, if you're just going to be sedentary, it's going to get worse a lot quicker. Because what comes with being sedentary? Gaining weight, a cycle of depression which increases the risk for other health issues associated with being overweight. And as you actually gain weight, the arthritis becomes harder because there's more load going in that joint. So for every pound that is lost, the load across the knee decreases three to six times. And that source comes from a research article from the Journal of Osteoarthritis um, that I found on the um, national, wait, what is the NCDI? Well, I forget what the acronym stands for. Uh, but anyways, it's peer-reviewed research, peer-reviewed uh, review on arthritis. Yeah. So there's even benefit to just being on your feet and being active. Like even though it doesn't feel good, right? Um, that couch potato life does not have a positive effect whatsoever. So even just being on our feet is a good thing which we know that from like health anyway right but yeah but still 
I mean, I, I've cool. seen, I've seen time and time again, so many people who just benefit from movement, but like, it's just so funny that this conversation is happening this week because I had a patient in one of my classes who like held me up after class. And he's like, Hey, I just want to chat. I was like, yeah, it's a losing. So, you know, I, but he's, he's been taking my class for like four years now, my, my healthy balance class. And he was just like, you know, I just wanted to share with you that like, he said motion is lotion. He literally said that that phrase. And then yes. he proceeded to tell me about how he has like pretty bad arthritis in his back. And since he started healthy balance, he started moving more and found that he's in next to no pain now. He used to wake up in pain almost every morning. Wow. And now he almost never feels pain as a result of just his constant movement. Now, granted, he was super inspired by one of the other people in that same class who got really into bike riding. So then he got himself a bike and started riding his bike wow. like 30 miles a weekend and like Oh, wow. He started moving so much and it was just really cool to hear that and how it's really impacted his life in such a positive way. Just getting that extra movement in. That is so cool. I was literally just going to ask if either one of you had like a testimony from like patients that you worked yeah, with from, on like, three how days it's impacted ago. them. That's so <laughs> cool. I love that. Yeah, it's and I I mean I love when patients basically validate the things that I say. It's kind of nice. So it makes you feel good. You're like, "Thank you." <laughs> you know, yes, this is great. It's, <laughs> right? To see the light bulb go off in their head like, "You were right." It's just so Yay! nice. <laughs> and it's just also nice too to see it impacting their lives in a way that makes them yes. feel better. You know, that's just it's so fulfilling just to know that it's impacting someone so positively and and just right. to have that ability to move more freely as a result of that, you know. Now, what I'm curious about is like, you know, cause you say the guidelines aren't different, but you keep, you keep mentioning minimizing certain movements that might cause pain, like twisting. So like, are there more movements we should be concerned about depending on if you have arthritis or not, like that would be impactful on the body or in a negative way, or is it just like, just specifically twisting? Like, well, what do we got here? Yeah, there's definitely some exercise precautions to take and some other ones are going to be high speed, high impact, high intensity movements, especially in the transverse plane, which is that twisting rotation movements. Mm -hmm. And that's because that can contribute to higher shear forces in the joints, which can lead to the more degeneration. And that's that point specifically comes from a source I have as well. So some examples of like high speed, high intensity exercise is going to be things like Probably running on pavement, that might be too too much impact, um, especially if, if that person's not even running or not even walking. Why would you go running, right? Uh, it's going to be things like plyometrics, like jumping up on stuff. But I have, I have a feeling that a lot of our population who listens to this probably wouldn't choose to go to the plyo box and jump on it, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it'd be cool. That'd be really neat. Yeah. yeah that would uh, be I'm sure some of them do, but not many. So, so what specifically is going to happen to their joints if they're doing these movements that are, that are that rough, right? Like doing impact on pavement, what's that going to be doing to them? Does it depend on the arthritis type that they have? It depends on the level of degradation of the joint. So okay. for people who are just in the beginning stages of arthritis, they can tolerate higher intensity exercises because they still have a substantial amount of um, uh, cartilage in the joint that acts as that cushion mm -hmm. uh, and lubrication with that synovial fluid in between it. But it's recommended for people that are in it more in an advanced stage of arthritis to only do lower intensity exercise. So it's really, it's up to the individual to, and their doctor to assess where their disease is at, where their condition is at, to figure out what level of intensity to be at. Okay. Uh, it can cause flare-ups, like Pain flare-ups can also happen if you go back to too much of a high intensity. So what's kind of nice about this is it's not like we have to worry about specific, too many specific exercises or movements. It's more of like pay attention to the intensity and the speed and the impact, okay. and then you should be good. Okay, that's cool. So I'm assuming something like swimming might be good. I have a lot of patients mm -hmm. that love to swim. I'm biased because I grew up a swimmer, but I also yeah, I'm biased it. too. I, I'm saying so like, Wait, let's, just, let's talk about I swimming. I love biased. swimming. Let's do it. <laughs> You're in a room full of water polo players. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm scared. True. You guys are tough. <laughs> that's hilarious. But it seems like, um, I don't know. That's a, like a frequently heard of go-to option, right? For patients that are experiencing any kind of pain with weight bearing, they go to the pool. 
Um, I usually recommend it too, just because like, at least they're moving in some capacity. I know there's like a benefit to doing weight bearing. Um, and maybe that's something you've kind of already mentioned, but does that come into play? Like, is there more of a benefit to like still continue to do weight bearing exercises with arthritis versus doing something weightless? Like if we did get into the pool or something like that? I would say if an individual can tolerate weight bearing, let's okay. do that. And let's sure, let's certainly swim as well, because that's going to work on cardiovascular health. And True that. It's, it's also exercise that's not loaded on the joints. But a lot of our life, yeah. we're weight bearing. we got to get out of a bed, out of chairs. So we want to make sure that we don't lose that ability as well. And that's what's so important about good strength point. training is to retain that. And if you think about a joint, there's two things that give structure to a joint. It's like the cartilage and the ligaments, which is what is degraded in arthritis, but also the muscle. There, nothing happens to the muscle in arthritis. The muscle is not degraded by arthritis. So let's focus on improving the muscle because that muscle also supports the joint. Okay. And to kind of circle back to the swimming thing too, because like, thankfully, I swimming. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Basically, one of the things that I'm aware of as far as like being in the water, so like swimming, swimming, depending on what you do, if you're pushing off of a wall or touching the bottom of the pool at any point, like walking or jumping or doing whatever, like water aerobics or somebody do water walking, uh, that's still impact. Um, that actually still has some true. impact because we're not 100% weightless in the pool. There is still a gravity component. That's why people can sink, right? Like, otherwise we wouldn't sink <laughs> in the pool. Point. So there's, you know, there is gravity, not a lot of yeah. it, but it's there. And so as a right. result... It does reduce the amount of impact, but this is a common thing when I was teaching water aerobics that people would ask me about, you know, like, well, what can I do if I have bad knees? And like, well, we could do the deep water because then you're not touching the bottom of the pool mm. because even in the pool and you have that bad of arthritis where impact is a problem, you might want to consider where you're literally suspended with like floating equipment versus actually running around on the bottom of the pool because you'll still have that joint, you know, impact as a result of that. So something just to take into consideration the pool isn't always a catch-all as much as I love it to be. Not everyone can float like that. Um, and they may opt not to do that. <laughs> um, but the other one that I've also known to, one, recommend and to uh, understand is a pretty decent way to navigate around arthritis is like a recumbent bike is another one I've, I've known to be a really good Ooh. low to no impact version of exercise they can do. Yeah. Or an elliptical that might be a little more because you're in a standing position. Tai Chi mm. is another one. Ooh. Yoga, different types mm. of yoga, especially our positive choice yoga videos that we have on our website. There's a lot of those that just involve being in a seated position. Those would be great. Mm -hmm. So just modifying things to make them suit what you're physically capable of doing is, is basically the, the key here. Um, and what doesn't yeah. cause excessive pain, right? We don't want to be super pain when we do this. Yeah, that's the main point of this whole podcast is exercise has been shown without a doubt to improve arthritis symptoms. So we all need exercise. It's just a matter of finding what exercise modifications we need to make and find our threshold or our max level that we should stay under. So start okay. small, start little. Now, like the other question that I have is, is there anything else we could do to help manage arthritis that isn't necessarily exercise related? Because, I mean, I'll talk about exercise all day. Don't get me wrong. But obviously, I feel like there's more things we can do outside of just the movement component, which seems to be cru crucial. Don't get me wrong. But like, you know, Kimberly, our, you know, our, our dietitian here, what, what are your thoughts on this? What do you what do you got going for this? Yeah. So nutrition. Okay. I'm biased again, but nutrition <laughs> is absolutely powerful, right? In, in just health in general, but also setting the pace for inflammation in our body, which is a factor in arthritis, right? And so there's definitely standard foods in our everyday diet that absolutely promote inflammation. Um, probably does not come as a shock to a lot of people, right? Things like sugar, <gasps> red what? and processed sugar? meat. I know. <laughs> Stop the presses. I know. Oh, gosh. Um, red and processed meats, deep fried foods, processed foods, right? So like, I like to think of it as like the more, okay, it's all the standard foods that we know we should keep our eyes on anyway, but the more processed or manipulated a food is, the more likely it is that it also uh, promotes inflammation in your body. And 
what we want to do to counteract that really is for one thing, think about our gut health, right? So getting a good um, amount of fiber in our daily diet, maybe thinking about getting some fermented foods in there from a probiotic standpoint. Um, but we want to focus on whole single ingredient foods. Um, that is absolutely going to help be anti-inflammatory in our system as well as, um, color. You want to think about colors, right? You want to get some antioxidants in there. So fruits and vegetables, lo and behold, anti-inflammatory, um, especially actually the reds, the blues, and the greens, those particular pigments are extra anti-inflammatory. They're extra potent. So anyway, yeah, definitely some things we can do. Now I've heard about turmeric. I think we're all curious about that. And yes, I mean, it's, it's a known thing um, that we have talked about before, but to answer for, for anyone else who might be listening, like what, what about turmeric? Like want to, want to answer that one? It's yes. Yellow. Okay. It's yellow. It's yes. <laughs> it'll Isn't dye that the your truth? fingernails. It's great. I love it. <laughs> I know it's going to say it like stains. That's all I know. Okay. So turmeric, yes. Super beneficial for um, being a powerful anti-inflammatory. That's because it has curcumin in it. Um, and basically it, it curbs inflammation um, because it is an antioxidant and it like inhibits the enzymes that drive inflammation essentially. Okay. Um, so you can't actually eat turmeric as like a supplement or as a root or a spice. Um, the, I want to say the powerfulness, what do I talk about? Like the absorption of it is more, um, is stronger. It's increased by like 2000 times when you actually eat it with black pepper, black pepper has, gosh, I think, is it pepperine? I don't know how to say it. It's spelled like that though. Um, in it that, um, when you take it with turmeric, it increases the absorption of it. Um, so cool. which so is nice. So eat it with make, some black pepper. <laughs> this is make a curry is what you're saying. There you go. Exactly. Yes. You're the chef. Make some, a curry. I have a question for you, Kimberly and Melanie yeah. as well. What are some easy ways to add more turmeric and black pepper to meals? Cause I'm thinking those are, those have very unique tastes. I don't know if it if it comes out in every dish. So what would be some like ways to eat that more throughout our week? That's a really good question. Melanie, do you have an answer to that? Because you're the flavor queen. I <laughs> My first thought was a patient that I have who makes it with apple cider vinegar and drinks it. But like you don't have to do yeah, that. Yeah, that's not what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, she'll do like apple what cider choice. vinegar, water, turmeric, and, and black pepper and like just go whoop and throw it back. And I'm like, well, she that's a cocktail I've never heard of. Yeah, so that's one way, which like I don't think shot. is the most palatable, in my opinion. Um, but, like, turmeric, you can add to really really a lot of things. Like, it does have a flavor, but it kind of also depends on the other things you're adding to it as well. Now, Indian food has a lot of turmeric in it, like a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, that's kind of what we know of, but it's a lot of Middle Eastern foods have it as well. Um, it's great to marinate chicken in. Honestly, if you eat chicken, that's a great way to marinate it and you can throw it on the grill or something or not, your choice. Um, It's like, yeah, black pepper and turmeric right there. Uh, Some people mix it in as smoothies because if they have other really powerful flavors and smoothies, it's a great way to mix that in. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I mean, there's lots of different ways to do it. But honestly, my first thought always goes to curry because I was like, oh, that's what you do. It's make a curry. Um, But I don't know if there's other ways you've heard of or know of, Kimberly, to incorporate that. Oh, I'd be lying if I said I was the best cook on the planet, but pretty much the ones that you just mentioned, yeah. especially smoothies is probably the one that I hear is the most it's, popular, but beyond taking a supplement. Yeah. Yeah. What about um, oatmeal? That'd be an interesting colored oatmeal. I was just going to say, <laughs> <laughs> you might have like, um, alien looking oatmeal, but. Like, oh, even oh. Just with like a quarter teaspoon. Oh, oh, okay. So what you could do, like, here's an example, uh, make a tofu scramble. And use it to make it yellow. That's the color of eggs. You throw it on a tofu scramble with some black pepper and you have a yes. scramble right there. And then you have turmeric as well. And you're doing plant-based, which is even better. Look at that. It's all three. Woo. Yes. Yes. So plant-based. Got that going for us. Okay. That's uh, awesome. So really like the, when it comes to arthritis and nutrition, it's the anti-inflammation foods that are going to ha- have the most powerful effect is what I'm Absolutely. hearing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, incorporating things like turmeric as well as, um, Oh my gosh, what was I going to say? Garlic and ginger. Ah, Those two good. are other ones that are good anti inflammatory oh, too. Curry? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? Come Have on, that's curry. like the main staples of curry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. But good news for garlic lovers, right? I'm personally one. So anyway, but oh, yes, yeah. highlighting those 
those whole single ingredient, largely plant-based foods, right? Awesome. So yeah. it's kind of like if we move, find a way to move our bodies in a mostly pain-free way consistently and we eat plant, plant-based, we can improve arthritis symptoms. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. yeah. Good that news, right? pretty applicable. Yeah. It's eat well, move more. Not eat less necessarily unless you want to lose weight, but eat well, move more, right? Like just eat. Yeah. Eat. I will quote Michael Pollan, eat real food, mostly plants, not too much. That's my favorite quote. Oh, I, will I love always that quote, quote that. too. Um, Good. Like that, that's the way I live by. I love it. And I want everyone to live that same way too. And it's not like you have to be 100% plant-based because I said, make some chicken. Uh, so you can do whatever you want. But right. the reality just comes down to choosing foods that will promote, you know, reduction in inflammation. Yeah. I love that. And, and, um, ugh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought, but what I was thinking to what you were just saying is it, you're, you're totally right. It's, you've mentioned making chicken. It's okay to have like animal sources of protein, right? But you just want to emphasize like the whole single ingredient foods. Um, and if you go the plant, like the animal based protein route, think about getting organic free range grass fed, right? All those types of words. Those are what you want to see because, um, you know, if you don't see those words, traditionally the animals are fed corn, which messes with, you know, all kinds of things that we wind up eating when we consume an animal product from. Yeah. Anyway, which has to do with inflammation too. So be picky, I guess is what <laughs> I'm trying to say. picky. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, unfortunately it's about that time. We must, we must Behold. go. Um, but I feel like we've kind of summed this up pretty effectively here towards the end. So um anything that you want to share brandon you want to plug yourself as a trainer what do you want to do here <laughs> i think i think i'll just share a resource um a really great resource that i got some information on 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 arthritis was the arthritis foundation so mm -hmm. it's just called, it's just arthritis.org and it's a oh. really great website where they have information about different types of arthritis they have different Treatments like a drug guide, a surgery guide, um, health and wellness. So they have healthy living, pain relief, eating healthy, and arthritis. And they'll are um, eating, moving, exercise for arthritis. And then they have like research on their website that they've done on arthritis. So a lot of different types of resources in this website. And this isn't just like a random website. This this website is cited by a lot of the organizations that I cited earlier. So just citations layered upon citations. That's Love hopefully it. that gives everyone awesome. confidence. It's not just a an Instagram account that I'm giving everyone or something. <laughs> and then I'll also share as well, plug for uh, one of our facilitators. So we have a facilitator, Carrie McCloskey, who is teaching a living well with osteoarthritis program. It's free for Kaiser members to 